Welcome to the fabulous Fempreneurship podcast series for entrepreneurs with your host, Elaine Slatter. Each episode addresses topics to help you and your business grow and succeed. Join us as we interview a variety of global experts. Welcome to the fabulous Fempreneurship podcast. Today, our guest is Yvette Mazariagos from Belize. And our topic is how to become a successful entrepreneur. Yvette has been an entrepreneur in Belize for over 25 years, and she's going to share with us the important things that have helped her become so successful in such a tiny country in the Caribbean. So welcome to the show, Yvette. And Yvette's going to give us a little bit of her bio. Hello, I am Yvette Masariegos, and um, I was born in Chetamal in Mexico, but from a young age, we, we, I was just born there um, we, because of the hospital situations, but I'm a Belizean with a Belizean nationality, and um, I went to the University of Belize. I have a bachelor's degree in business administration. And I got married to my husband, who is an engineer. And in 1995, 1996, I decided to open a business. It's called M&M Distributors. And my, I, my firm imports and distributes paper printing products and equipment and medical supplies galenicals, chemicals, and textile fabrics. And um, so far, since 1996 to 2020, um, M&M Distributors now employs two full-time employees, four seasonal employees, and my husband and myself, we would manage the assets. And um, my market is mostly the private sector and the government of Belize. Um, we have, I have over the years, I've been in business for over 25 years. And over the course of time, I have pivoted and done many different businesses that um, are successful. But the, so we started with paper products. And we, it grew into a paper converting company, transforming paper in large rolls into sheets. So, and we also sold fabric textiles in rolls, um, like to make uniform materials or curtains. And then also we sold medical supplies like gloves, Gowns, face masks, um, disposable medical supplies, syringes, and also um, some other stuff that we would sell uh, is equipment as well. That's a great intro, uh, Yvette. So our topic today is how to become a successful entrepreneur and you've had so much experience. So my first question is, what does it take to be an entrepreneur? Well, um, what it takes is to have a passion and to um, have a, an, a vision of where you want to go. You have to also be a, a risk taker and be an um have an ample personality where um, you pretty much have to um, understand the position of different people and never and always see the positive side of things. Never say no unless it really is impossible. But most times you will try to find a solution instead of um, uh, to find a solution and to believe in your product. Like, for example, I'm in Belize and I firmly believe in Belize and to promote Belizean products. So um, that's an, uh, another item that 
Another thing that I, I believe in to help the economy in Belize. So if I can get good products at a very good price to Belizeans, that is a key important thing to be successful and to also see the market trends. So when some businesses or some products might be selling slowly, um, like fabric and textiles during this COVID time, the other products like the medical disposable supplies will be selling and taking off. So it is good for um, to, to notice the trends in the, in the market and follow the trends. And that is the very key thing to have, to have a vision and, and notice that and to have the ability to, to change whenever you need to um, change. So I think that's very important when you're living in a small country such as Belize, that you need to be at the forefront, as you say, of what's happening in the marketplace and take the risk that it's, you know, of these ideas, the new uh, trends and invest in, in those trends. And that's taking a big risk, right? Yes. So what would you say is the biggest risk that you as M&M distributors have taken over the last 25 years? Um, the biggest risk or, uh, or, or inconveniences, which, which one, I guess in funding my business, because at first um, it was hard to get funding. We started with a very small capital because in that time, 95, 96, there were no incubators. There were no grants being given, no angel investors or donors. You just had to um, pull up yourself by your bootstraps. It was really difficult, but not impossible because that's part of the challenge. And I was up to with the stamina for the risk taking. So um, starting with a small capital that my husband had, for, we started with that at the bank and we convinced um, the bank managers to lend us some money without, uh, without much capital collateral. We were able to convince them by getting short-term loans, repaying it immediately, and as they got more confidence in us, they loaned us a little bit more money. And then with some capital, um, some collateral that we have, like my house and, and some vehicles and real estate, we would have uh, that we went getting little by little, not immediately, one by one. We, st we were able to give up some collateral to the bank and get more money. And the bigger contracts and the bigger sales that we got, um, we were able to access more money. So it, it went growing little by little. Mostly at first, the, the banking people had to get a trust in, in, in us. So that is one of the main risks is to know what you're selling, to who you're selling, and to get the financing for that. Because if, if you don't analyze it well, then you won't have a business and you won't have anyone to lend you the money. That, yes, that's very true. You have to have some knowledge of the market that you're going into and the competitors in that market and how you're going to reach that market. And then the bank will loan you probably a little bit of seed money to get started. So I guess one of the other questions is, I'm sure that in that 25 years, managing your business cash flow has been a very important aspect of your success. Yes, that, that is important. Okay, so how have you managed your cash flow? How do you, do you keep reinvesting in your business? Yes, um, we tend to get like short term loans we well first we would get the sales first i'm uh, confident of that sale and sometimes i would get um a deposit sometimes not and i would use 
um, I would play with my suppliers this money because we also discussed with them. So they would give me the credit, maybe not right at first, but as I started purchasing from them over the time, they give me credit. Then in turn, I get a loan from the bank. So I'm able to sell to my client. My client pays cash on delivery or sometimes would pay up front a certain percentage. I deliver in a timely manner. They pay. And whenever they pay, I pay the bank immediately. I would clear my costs right away with them, have a good reputation with them at the bank. And then whatever else is left over is for myself. And I would pay back my, well, I would pay back my supplier and my, my bank at the same time. And whatever else is left is for myself. So we needed to make sure that our costs were correct because we need to pay back the supplier, the bank, the short-term loan, and the freight and import duties. So we needed to clear all of that. So many times I would not like include costs for myself, my salary at first, because it would make the item expensive. So to get customers to buy, we we, well, we started like that, and as we and growing well we could start adding or raising the prices but you had to be very careful to make sure you can pay back your suppliers and your bank and be very responsible with that yeah totally and not everybody is good at that part um yeah. and that's so important to having uh, a good uh business that will last the 25 years that such as yours and a lot um, having a business in Belize means that you have to import a lot of stuff, main, and a, quite a bit of it comes from China. So there's a long lead time. The manufacture t- manufacturing time in China, the on the in transit time, the amount of time that it's on the water. Um, you know, before you can even, um, you know, the wharf time that. Un- unloading and so on to get it into your warehouse. So there's quite a bit of long lead time that you have to have uh, that you're borrowing the mo- the money for. So you know you as you say you need to pay back the bank, pay back the supplier, and still have some net profit for you for your business. Otherwise, why would you be in business? You have to have some profit because that's how your business is going to sustain itself. Yes, that part of importing from China with the long lead times, that's a recent, that's more recent in my business. Before then, I would import mostly from the neighboring countries like Guatemala, Salvador, and the USA that did not have such long lead times. Uh, those like, those items were a little bit more expensive because they are right on hand, but they have been through many different layers. Like my supplier would probably have another supplier, so there would be a lot of in between people. Yeah. The price, the, yes. So, but the convenience of having it right next door with a lead time of what three to five working days mm-hmm. from Guatemala, and then from the states, the lead time would be ten working days. It's still very small lead times, and the 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 key to success there was the ability for me to bring things as fast as possible because with in comparison with my competition i would have maybe sometimes the shortest lead time of an item that is urgently needed and i would be the only one who would have that so i would bring it in for them even if the price is a little bit more expensive so i was able to um that was a very specific feature that my business had I was able to bring something really quickly something that is urgent and really quickly at a reasonable price in comparison to my competition 
my competition might have it at a longer lead time or more expensive or a combination. And that is where I was able to enter the market because at the time when I was entering, the situation was different. It was difficult. Business was difficult. Already had established people with established roots and products and brands, but I had to differentiate myself from them by bringing products as quick as possible and as cheap as possible. I did that by Next Door Guatemala. It is a, um, a more developed economy, more developed country. So there, uh, my suppliers were huge importers from China. They had good prices, so I was able to do that. But then after a while, my competition got, they, they started to step up to the plate and started to be able to have either in, in stock or whatever. And so I had to then do something else different then. So by this time, my company had grown a little bit and I had the possibility to start importing from India, from China, from Germany, and um, from, well, just from the States as well. So the the difficulty then, like you said, is the lead time. The lead time there would be 10 to 12 weeks. And that was a little bit of a setback. But what made up for it was the price. My client, my competition would bring it in maybe 8 to 10 weeks. But their price would be way higher than mine. So that... So my clients would then weigh off the, the, the urgency. So if it is not too urgent for them, they would purchase it from me at a much cheaper price. They can buy two times the amount of products than from the competition. Then comes COVID in this year where um, they needed something super urgent. And I was the only one Literally, at the beginning of COVID, I was the only one who could bring in the item for them, period, at a cheap price. The only thing that they needed now is they needed a short delivery time, not 12 to 14 weeks. Like if it comes by ship, they wanted it by plane. So now I had to tell them, look, this is the price by plane. Do you want it? by plane or can you wait for it so if they cannot wait for it then they make the decision to pay for it by by plane so it would come really quick by plane so that was my um my edge at first yeah, at that time at the beginning of covid so i was able to sell this item um, these ppes and all these important items uh, because my competition, they did not have set up trade routes with people from China. They were mostly dealing from the USA as they, and they were so comfortable with the USA. Whereas I had my doors and my channels open to not just the USA, but far away. Uh, I did this thinking that one day in the future, it might be handy. And it came in handy in 2020. So that is why I was. I had this um, established already, so I was the only one. But then again, I noticed that this is, with me, I always have this tendency to be able to spot things out quicker than other competitions. But as soon as they see what I'm doing, they start to do the same thing, and nothing is wrong with that. The only thing that I don't like is when... Um, let's say they have a friend of a friend and helps them to get it. And even if I might have a still, I might still have a little edge over them. This is what I call disloyal competition. And I, I don't like that. It's not fair. But I guess life is not fair. I just have to move and pivot and find something else that will make me more competitive and, and just keep going. I'm, I'm not, um, fearful of that because I know I have the ability to to change and, and being a trendsetter. So if they want to follow, they can follow all they want. 
so that, that's well i think one thing that you do very well and i think is important when you are to becoming a successful entrepreneur is that you know how to evaluate your competitors even if if um a person starts is a client to begin with and then becomes a competitor you yeah. easily you easily find another way to yeah. to either make that competitor still your uh customer or find another niche that you can go in that you have less competition you're a magician i think at finding ways to pivot your business and mm-hmm. and uh, especially during covid i mean you mentioned how uh you're going to be bringing in um you know drums of hand sanitizer and selling it wholesale so that other people can put it into smaller um size containers Contain- and resell it but at the same time you're looking at other ways that you can uh, develop that side of the business for yourself which i think is fantastic you are a true entrepreneur in that you see opportunity everywhere and as you say um <laughs> you 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 take way more risk than your husband um and and i think that's what makes you successful is that you are a visionary um in seeing things way ahead of other people which for our listeners is if you have an idea that you think is a little bit way out there just look at the marketplace and if it has an opportunity to become a business try it out cuz that's what you're yes. doing all the time yes Con- constantly um yeah. one of the things that i i tend to do is i i evaluate my competition up to a certain point or superficially yeah. because i cannot be bogged down or worrying about the competition what they are doing because if i do that then i'm i'm watching what they're doing and i don't have time to watch what i'm doing so what i need to do is that um like for example two products can serve the same purpose and it is used maybe for the same thing but the quality might be different mm-hmm. i you, you I, if you choose a market that you prefer that's up to your um way of thinking your 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 natural way of everything you target that market and you find good suppliers for that product for example the alcohol the five drums of alcohol or hand sanitizers that i plan on bringing in i have identified a very good quality brand and a very large supplier of that and up to now i'm the only seller i'm their distributor or seller for that product in the lease so i not wasting time to see what alcohol my competition is bringing in no i'm not worried about them i'm worried about getting my name brand with my quality product and i have found a client who wants to um transform this this alcohol and hand sanitizer into a smaller container and resell it in the lease so um so that is what i i need to do i need to choose my market you need to choose your market you target it you find your good supplier of your product that you wish to sell you set your profit margin which i did i set my profit margin and i'm not afraid of the competition i just go forth in faith that i will sell it and the competition for some reason is always watching what i'm doing and they want to follow what i do then they do their own twists and their own own personalities and and we have a healthy system a entrepreneurial system going there because we you should never be just the only person selling that in a country it's always good to have competition it brings out the best in everyone up to a certain point when it becomes detrimental is when you just it's not good for it to be negative it's always good to have a healthy entrepreneurial system and competition so if you have your own price it doesn't have to be the cheapest one it just have to be the best quality and in good efficient timing that good yeah. quality and to bring it in efficiently Perfect. so yes yeah, so mm-hmm. another thing is that um it's not hard to get 
clients in Belize. Yes, Belize is only about 380,000 people. It's not hard to get find clients to just from from you from me. Uh, it's because I only wholesale. I do not retail. What is hard for me to do is to keep these clients after they have grown to a certain um, de- development or a certain stage. Sometimes, like for example, this new client right now, she's all happy and everything that I'm able to get all this alcohol for her and she will transform believe in Belize. She will do a Belizean product. I'm happy for that. What I'm thinking now in the future is I wonder if she would be like some other clients that I've had in the past that once I'm selling them paper and I'm selling them cloth and other medical supplies that I'm selling them and they get to be a biggish company, like three people or so, then what they start to do is they want to buy from my supplier <laughs> and that is not good. That is not healthy because then they, they um, take away time from their selling and growing their business and their sales. They then want to take on another aspect of a business and that is not good. If we have healthy links in the chain, everyone does their own part we will have a healthy entrepreneurial system. Yeah, but so what you're saying is that they then want to become a wholesaler, but really what they should do is be concentrating on selling the product right? so right. that that's part of the chain that you're not in yes. because you're not a retailer. So, right. um, yeah, I totally understand that. Well, thank you very much, Yvette, for all your wise advice on entrepreneurship. And I'm sure uh, sometime in the future, we'll be discussing different other pivots that you've done in your business. And thank you so much for being on our show today. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Aline, for having me on your show and for this opportunity. Thank you so very much. To receive your free gift and connect directly with the podcast guest, visit our website at fabfempreneurship.com slash entrepreneur mastermind podcasts and click on this episode. Here's to building your business growth one step at a time. If you enjoyed this podcast, why not tune into other episodes in this series at fabfempreneurship.com slash entrepreneur mastermind podcasts.